to the end. It's gonna be Jiao Love on the Gyrocopter, so it, it will be Gyrocopter and uh, LPC's IO, which is really good. At, even oftentimes earning respect bands on the IO as appearing to be a pretty popular hero in 6.82. Just maybe due to the uh, the room changes with the bottle, able to run a mid with a uh, plus one, and maybe we see him and Gyro really show up there in the middle lane. We'll have to wait and see as we do get started here. And once again, before we get going, it is Beyond the Summits, the Summit 2, the Chinese qualifiers, brought to you by G2A.com and 100TB.com. I'm Helium. You can follow me and make sure to tweet at me. We got some critiques, some ideas, questions, queries, quandaries all over there at Helium Umbrella. You can find it in the top right. And now, of course, the most important part of tonight. Let's introduce the teams, get this game underway. LPC on the Wisp for Tong Fu. We already talked about it. Supporting up in the bottom lane, Xiao Love Gyrocopter. A little bit behind them, it will be Red on the Skywrath Mage. U, 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 9 in the middle lane on the puck, and it'll be Kabu off lane Faceless Void. Um, moved out to get some intel, but left the Observer Ward behind. I like that, so they didn't see it in his inventory. If they did catch a glimpse of him, and who could have caught the glimpse? It could have been the Sand King over for LGDC deck. That's going to be Garter. Also supporting alongside him, it will be Q on the Ancient Apparition. XH actually will be playing the Centaur War Runner. Maybe looking to put on a show, maybe even a clinic as well, on how to play the Templar Assassin. This guy, I say it every time, the player to watch, man. He is pretty unreal. And 333 will actually be playing um, the Nature's Prophet as LGDC deck. Haven't been running the uh, the Centaur offlane as much. They've definitely been giving it farm priority, and we'll see them do that again as XH will pick it up and look to get a very quick Tranquil Blink and get the show moving along here as 333 will just farm up. Well, one Nalt Talisman already. We'll see how many he will get this game. Perhaps three of them. Oh, I can't draw on the minimap. Dang it. Three of them. That one will show up. <laughs> yeah. Treants ready to go. That's an actual tree. Oh, that's nothing. Texture's a little too close. There they are. Little bonsai trees. Pretty awesome. I believe Kunkka. Whoa, hello. Horn, what's up? I believe those were the Kunkka treants, but here we go. Brief pause, but not too long. Not too much to delay us. We did have a little bit of delay finding that new lobby host, but hey, we're here now, and that's all that matters. Illusion over to the gyro. Not really a good rune to find in the safe lane. Um, unless you're the off laner, then you can block, you know, you can actually block three camps with it. This, put it here, block this camp, this camp, and an illusion here to block that camp. And hugs and kisses as well. Um, but yeah. Not going to do too much for the dry row. A, a little more help with uh, zoning out here. Maybe gives them control to the IO, but whatever. That's 45 seconds and not even that much as the creeps now just show up. Uh, but middle lane. You would expect the puck to have a pretty difficult time, but it looks like uh, Tong Fu's up on the change. They'll just keep the Sky Wrath in the middle lane as oh, we'll pretend that didn't happen. Up in the top lane, Kabu never actually did he ever drop that ward? Yeah, he dropped it here. Doesn't see them coming around for the flank, and they didn't get anything up there but a bounty. But uh, apparently, the sleepiness setting in. First blood equals mist. We'll do better, guys. We'll do better. Kabu is probably okay with us not catching it, but he's the one to go down. Puck so far having a pretty good time and generally doesn't against the TA, but if you're going to get camped by a Skywrath Mage as well, this hero is excellent at zoning out other heroes, so that's what he's doing right now, allowing UU9 to get some space, but actually, this is a, a finer mechanic of the game. Puck can dominate the first three creep waves against a TA if he plays it right. Uh, so I would have liked to have seen the Skywrath maybe show up just a bit later, because Puck could have just done that himself. Basically, you build up a big creep wave, you force maybe behind the tower, the creeps take off his refraction, and you just get as many hits in as possible. You can be very aggressive against the TA, uh, but basically after TA is like level 3, that's over. So that's over already. Up top though, Kabu looking for some revenge. He will find it, and he's going to time walk out. Kabu was joined by Red. He rotated off the mid, went top, and puts Kabu and his team on the board, getting a little bit of revenge from that first blood. 
So Pox dominating that. It's actually not dominating. Mid lane is pretty much even right now as TA gonna start to take it away. But let's check out the bottom lane. We've got Zhao Love 10 and 2 on the gyro. 3-3. Three, three. 3-3 three, three with, well, three last hits, three denies. Living up to his name right now at just under three minutes. Um, something, something obligatory. Half-Life 3 confirms. I don't know. Um, seems like it would have been a reasonable place to put that. But, yeah. Gyro is generally very good 1v1 and will be, I think, end up dominating the lane against the nature's prophet but well already is rocket barrage a little mitigated by the extra the extra foot traffic of the tree and protectors has more targets to bounce onto so he can't get the focused focus damage on nature's prophet which generally will buy enough time for the nature's prophet to just tp out um which is which is fine for the Nature's Prophet, not so much for the Gyro. Could maybe put a point in Homing Missile, but even if you set it right next to the Nature's Prophet, it's you still have enough time to TP out. Or just barely either way. I'm actually not 100% if it was right next to him. But uh, up top, we had Kabu give up the early first blood. He's 1-1. One, one. He's getting some last hits. He's up to level 3 and soon to be level 4, so he's doing quite well. Nature's Prophet's about the same in experience, but without the death and... About the same amount of farm as XH getting his farm on brown boots there. We'll probably see... Well, we'll actually wonder if we'll see the Tranquils uh, come up first. Uh, or if we'll just go brown boots to the Blink Dagger. As supports back off. See some nice... Uh, uh, not going to stack the camp, so Q gonna have to pull it. No pressure, buddy. Everyone is watching. Is mine. Show us what you can do. And he's got it. And this is stacked, so that's going to be nice. Can definitely clear that up together. But Faceless Void going to be annoying. And come over and try to split some of that. Actually, Creep Wave, not very large. Not going to be able to kill many of them anyways. As Uh-oh. The Hellbear Smasher wants to smash. Oh, he's actually out of mana. So he will run out. He's probably been there for, for a couple Creep pulls if he's already out of mana. I guess, yeah, you have to use it three times. So... I don't know why he has seven. Was there a satyr in there or something with the mana regen? I don't, I don't know. It seems weird. Just like curious to watch this and see if he goes to eight. Sand King, yeah. Well, that's why it's stacked. Sand King working on taking those out. He is uh, level three, two points in the sandstorm. So that's basically what he wants to do. Got an early kill on the board, uh, did a couple of stacks, got level 3, and now he's just going to clear him up and kind of AFK until he can get that blink dagger. He's already sitting on the brown boots and about 700 gold, so at 5 minutes he's doing well. Uh, if he just keeps farming, he's probably on target for the, uh, for the under 10 minute blink dagger, which can make a big impact in the mid game. Pushing though in bottom. You got the regen from the aisle, keeping Jiao Lev up. Red there as well, getting some last hits in. No one will last at the tower, and overall, for the greater good, that's better for the team, but Jiao Lev would have liked the extra uh, bonus gold there to get his next item up online, and we'll see what it's going to be. It probably will be an Aquila, but that's not the big item he's going for. We'll see if he takes a stop back for the drums as well, or if he'll start working towards maybe something bigger. Casual Yasha to farm a bit faster, maybe Helm of Dominator. Also a BKB as that hero's fairly fragile. He's got a good armor, but not that much uh, HP. So the magic immunity from a BKB really helps, but then it kind of limits your damage output as you do need a lot to make Flak Cannon the fantastic spell it is. And you will see him maxing Flak and Rocket Barrage as is pretty standard. Uh, you'll see Homing Missile get skilled up on Gyro if he starts off in the middle lane, but obviously not what we're seeing right now. That matchup, Puck. Templar Assassin. We shall return to it. Puck doing pretty well. Obviously he had the help at the beginning. Um, I don't know if they've rotated back through, but he's doing alright. About 7 last hits behind right now. Is 31 and 11, so maybe does have the advantage here. Puck is maybe signature hero, so he definitely knows the limitations of Puck against TA. And he's probably a good TA player as well. So 34 and 11, 24 and 7. Somewhat even as the Skywrath will show back up once more. TA sees it and thinks about getting aggressive, but will stop now as uh, Wisp goes up to the offlane. The spirits bothering the creeps as they collide there on that path. The double, double the Hellbear Smashers, double the Fun Smash. They're upset, man. They don't want to be disturbed. They just want to go home. They they gotta 
sort of a duality going on. They're a little confused. They're not sure if they're Hellbear Smashers or if they're Centaurs or, or what, because they do have the Swiftness aura, but no one at Valve thought to change the, uh, change the icon. Bit of an oversight. Honestly, not very important, but look at this face. Like, Swiftness aura is going to be the best icon in the game once they change that. Just, just wait. That's a face only a mother could love. Actually, I don't know if that's true, because I kind of love it. Alright, we saw Centaur clearing that out with a double edge, and that brings me to a point that doesn't really matter too much this game, but Centaur is actually an offlaner that's pretty capable of, uh, of jungling up large stacks. So you can do a little trick where you purchase up a smoke and just start double edging down camps, and they won't hurt you. Obviously, you hurt yourself with the double edge, but they won't attack you, and you can clear out massive camps. But there's a stampede for the added damage. Two heroes to pass through, and it will be the void to pass away. Ancient Apparition actually going to be the recipient of the kill, but we've got some more action by the top. Rune spawn. LPC only level 4 here will go down, and now Red could be in some trouble. Big mount strike from maybe. Now 3-3-3 three, three, three gonna TPN and Tong Fu. They're losing everybody. Can't get away from that. The double edge from the centaur. Suddenly, 5-1 to one across the board. Three kills. Make it four, because Kabu went down before that. Only a dream coil used in terms of the ultimates. Getting a lot. Dream coil not enough to get away from maybe. Maybe just destroying some faces right now. Big meld hits. Two uh, points into the meld, maxing out refraction, very standard. Some mashups, I believe you put two inside blades, but I think uh, with the meld, with Puck being so squishy, with not a lot of armor, any meld hit on Puck is really dangerous territory for the Puck. You gotta back off, get your armor back, and just be careful overall. Sky also squishy, went down from about half HP with that meld right click. LPC wanted to get involved, unfortunately he wasn't level 6, and we couldn't really expect him to be as just now is about the earliest you'd see them getting 6, unless it was a really good game. Uh, just under 10 minutes now, still level 5. Zhao loves ready to go, he's level 8, he's a, one more level and he's maxed out his uh, offensive spells here, or the, the bread and butter of them at least, the rocket rush, the flak cannon. He's got the call down, he's really just waiting on the Wisp to bring him to the fights. Other than that, he will sit bottom. Until, well, either the Wisp is 6 or LGDC deck is going to force him out of the lane, but... As of right now, I don't know if they're too worried about him. Q, going to continue stacking up there. For the Centaur, he's already got the Blink. 10 minutes in, he's got Blink Tranquil Boots. Looking over at the Sand King right now. Is that a Blink Dagger? Is he done? Wow. Blink Dagger coming out. Maybe in the middle lane on the TA. Has finished Tread Drums. So going for the, I would say, the slightly more team-oriented and, and late-game oriented. As you pick up the Treads, you don't have as good a chasing potential no, as Phase Blink, but you add the Treads, a little extra move speed from the Drums, more attack speed, though, so when you are in close, you can actually have more damage output. Um, I mean, every build is still good, and I would say that it, it matters from game to game, but it honestly... I don't know. Whatever. We'll hold that point. Chrono goes out. And there's the refraction. Like, can't even hurt him. And now another refraction's up. Rocket Barrage will bring it off pretty quickly. There's a coil. Ice Blast going out. Q's already level 6. Maybe with a triple kill right now. He did have a double damage in a bottle. And they can barely scratch him. About half HP he gets to. The trap goes out. And we'll land on red. Refraction in one. He'll tank the tower. Melt hit. Oh, is that 75% of your HP? Yeah, I may be. And that's an ultra kill. Doesn't even go back to base. That's how much of a badass he is. Just TPs to the tier 2 to farm some more. I mean, he's got magic stick and another wand. That's essentially full HP. And then he can rotate back mid and just scoop up the rune that he will see. Psionic trap. Top rune and bottom rune. Did I tell you he was the player to watch? Or did I tell you he was the player to watch? Already 6, 0, and 1 involved in 7 of the 10 kills. Tong Fu getting outclassed here in game number one with their tournament life on the line. LGDC deck, I think they uh, they really want the uh, Merlini Tub interview. It's probably their inspiration for this game right now. Oh, 
Oh, sorry, guys. People dying so fast. So fast. Heroes dying so fast, no one will notice that I missed the kill, right? Right, guys? Uh, 11 to 1 now. Kabu, where are you at right now? Uh, well, 12 minutes, so we'll switch net worth real quick. We'll see the TA, no surprise, after a good farm in the mid lane and a triple and an ultra kill this game. Uh, that would actually be seven, but at least a triple kill. No, one ultra we had. Uh, 7,000 is out front in net worth. Free farming and pretty much not, not even messed with at all is Zhao Love. Zero and one. Okay, so he did die once in the middle lane as he came to get involved in the fight. They're looking for a relocate now, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to keep our eyes on Gyro. Okay, maybe not. They'll go up top where Chrono was waiting for them. It just runs out as the Centaur is still alive. This is going to be a big kill. He tries to TP. He will not make it, and that's the second kill of the game for Tong Fu. The first one came up uh, to make it even at 1-1, and then over the next 13 minutes, it was anything but, and still is anything but. Uh, two kills, though, now. Better than one. But a 6,000 gold lead, 6,000 experience lead at just 13 minutes, and that's getting to the point where it's very sizable. That's pretty scary. And what else is scary is just being Skywrath Mage. Regardless of where he is on the map, he should be scared. Why? Because he's already getting two shots. Uh, becoming a liability more than the the, f the scary Skywrath Mage that zones out Skywrath all heroes from lanes. Maybe getting that revenge from, from the very early game when he was uh, in lane with the puck. Now he's in base, respawning. Getting close to the mech, about 100 gold away. Wind Ranger... <laughs> Wind Ranger? Woo, five in the morning. Centaur War Runner is what I was reading. Picking up the kill there on Kabu up top. Cameraman, please. Team fight recap. He died. Good job, recap. I've changed the settings. Shout out to uh, Chipmuckle, aka Pimp Muckle. Someone make a petition for him to change his name because the new one is not as good. And, uh, yeah, big old two. So, Skywrath getting two shot. Wisp, two shot. Um, you're, you're in a bit of a pickle, because, I mean, Jiao Love's gonna get two, like, almost two shot as well. He's got 11 armor at least, 1,000 HP. So, okay, it's a lot better than one armor and 700 HP. You see how squishy that Skywrath is. And X-Age, not very squishy, but they will get the kill there. Dream Coil keeping him on a short leash, doesn't want to snap in and will be greeted with a Mystic Flare to the face. Red now almost getting level 7 off of that, says, uh, well, there it is. Two Null Tallies, Power Treads, and a Blade Mail. I personally like to mix in a Ring of Bass. You don't get the extra stats, but it's very cheap damage, 500 gold for 6 damage. Uh, and of course the armor will go a long way in the aura for your team to push, but here we go, the TP behind, this is very aggressive, they, how do they not expect anything, you gotta back off, like, Nature's Prophet isn't sprouting in behind you by himself, and the Blink Dagger, they know it's up on Garter, the great two-man's burrow strike, uh, blinking down from the high ground, and, I don't know, that just looks like carelessness from Tong Fu for me, 3 to 16, alright, I don't normally do this, but you know what we want, Six more kills. Right? Yeah. But math? <laughs> Six more kills for LGDC deck unanswered. The magical 3 2 2 scoreline. It's obtainable this game, and LGDC deck can give it to us. They're aware that Roche might be going down. They have a Chrono. So far, Chrono hasn't netted much for them. They can barely kill anyone. And Garter's going to start things off. Oh, this is going to be a big Ice Blast, so let it fly onto Kabu. And applies the debuff. As, uh, well, Dream is dead, boys. Tong Fu find a pair of kills. It's going to be four for them right now. 18 for C deck as uh, LPC trying to get out, but will not be able to sprout it up. And then Burrow struck. And now it's 4 to 19 as Urn being delivered to the Sand King. I'll keep preaching it. The PSAs, Urn buffed if you're not buying it on at least one hero on your team in 6.82 you're playing dota wrong Radiance and we see it on both teams wisp of course picking it up and sand king not as likely of an item on him but he'll go for the urn as well got the trifecta of blink daggers on c deck uh, ancient apparition goes tranquil boots looking for the ags and we already talked about nature's profits build uh, looks like maybe might be going glass cannon deso 
Oh. Uh, could be a BKB and XH. Probably going BKB. Maybe it's an SNY. I've seen him do that before. And when you're winning at this point, SNY going to be pretty much good on anybody. Especially agility or strength heroes. That's Kabu up trouble. Up trouble. Close. In top. In trouble. As, uh... Holy shit. Maybe. He's got another kill. Kill on the puck there. UU9 taking a fall on the his glass cannon. Desolator. Well, hardly that glass. He's got treads and a drum and an Aegis, so... He's still glass, but he's got a, a lifetime warranty with the Aegis. Radiance middle tower is under attack. <laughs> Radiant structures are fortified. I like the Twitch chat spam. People think I have fans. I don't think that's a thing yet. Uh, but maybe one day, as maybe goes forward and will one shot someone else. So Tong Fu, I think, would be okay. Oh, the deny, the manly deny from Kabu, but at what cost? There were heroes there, now they are not. Here's the relocate in, another one shot out there to the Wiz, maybe again, like we said, he's got that life insurance with the Aegis, we'll find a double kill there, it's a full five man wipe, and at this point, I think it would be okay for Tong Fu to just tap out, it's that bad, 15,000, almost a thousand, yeah, they tap out, I mean, you're not, you're not doing anything right now, so, saving themselves and everyone a little bit of time, and, they don't want to burn themselves out in game one. It's a best of three series, right? This game, it didn't go their way. They can come back. They can analyze this game, at least in the next five to ten minutes of a bit of a break we'll have, if that. Uh, and they can say what they did wrong, what they'd like to see, or maybe switch it up completely and go for game two. It's a best of three series. Don't wear yourself out in the first game. Next game, don't type GG until the throne explodes. Like, play your heart out because your tournament life is on the line, but don't tire yourself.